we are done with the 1840s ensemble and I can't believe it. I feel like it took over my life for the last few months. So to finally come to a wrapping up point has been crazy. Although I do hope that you enjoyed the entire series. Now I'm going to be leaving much heavier into my fiber crafts because the 1840s I did have to focus some on sewing, but now we're gonna really lean into knitting and crocheting. And today what I thought we would do is kind of a redemption. I have done two mystery patterns in the past, both somehow ended up being capes, one knit, one crochet. I'm still working on the knitted one. It just takes a lot of time to do all of that looped knitting and keep an eye out on my Patreon because that's where I will post the finished version of that cape. The other one is the crochet one, which ended up being a pelerine for Nutella rather than myself. And I just couldn't drop it. <laughs> Originally I was like, you know what? I tried it. I gave it my best shot and I just, I'll move on. But it has been eating away at me, especially after all the comments that I received and helpful advice that I got. Especially the one thing being that I completely missed the fact that it asked for a pound of Berlin wool. This should have been a huge red flag that it was not going to be a collar, but instead going to be a much larger piece. So today we are doing a mystery pattern redemption and I am going to actually retry knitting that pelerine or cape to an adult's dimensions so that maybe Nutella and I can match. I have been working on kind of reinterpreting the pattern a little bit with the stitch definitions and some swatches. So let me take you right over to that and kind of discuss what I have been thinking so far. Oh, and by the way, I am currently at my parents' place, so it might look a little bit different in the background of this video. And I'm probably gonna sound pretty stuffed up. I have pretty bad allergies that even my medications can't touch when I'm out here in the summertime. So I apologize for those two things. Now to the crocheting. So the first thing that I did when it was time for me to kind of work on redoing this pattern is I looked at all the different types of stitch definitions, including the one from Karina. And uh, I saw basically the book that this pattern is from, which is Mrs. Beaton's book of needlework, the red cover. There is a later edition, I'm pretty sure, that has a lot of the stitch definitions, but doesn't include this pelerine pattern. But the one that her, the pelerine pattern is from doesn't include stitch definitions. So I kind of went through a few different books and what their stitch definitions would be for the stitches that are in the pattern and use that to kind of try out and transcribe the entire pattern into something that is in my modern crochet terms that I would understand. And here is how the first test turned out. This is with Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Wool. So it's a worsted weight wool. And like I started, I think with five millimeter crochet hooks. And I think that you can see that the pattern kind of comes through although the length is still pretty short. Like maybe this would be a child's cape. So I decided instead of changing any of the stitch definitions that I would go up in hook size. And here is the second sample, which is a bit longer. So if you compare it, it is a bit longer. I started at a six millimeter size needle and then I kept on increasing until a nine millimeter size needle at the bottom here. And that made me feel confident enough to restart again. You'll notice that I didn't do the border at the bottom, so I'm still assuming that there's going to be a little bit extra length there. Now I'm raiding my mom's yarn stash to redo this because I'm at my parents' place right now. And while I don't think that I would typically choose this olive color for myself, I'm really happy that I did because I'm I'm really enjoying how this kind of natural green looks. You might notice a few things that are different. Firstly, this yarn is thicker than the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. So if I hold them together, it is quite a bit thicker, but it is working with the larger hook sizes quite well. I'm now a little worried that it actually might be a bit too large. But one thing that I'm noticing is I'm continuing to crochet. This is not taking me super long. So if I keep on going and I'm like halfway through and I realize it's too wide, then I can always start over and I won't be too upset with having to undo it. The second thing you might notice is that this is quite a bit more textured. And the main reason for that is I looked at the stitch definitions on the Beaton's book, Mrs. Beaton's Needlework book. <laughs> I forget the whole title. The title's gonna be super long. And one of the things that was pointed out is that the typical stitches, you only work through the back loop of your crochet. And it is very, they pointed out very clearly when it wants you to work through both loops. So when you work through only the back loop, you kind of are getting this, I don't know, it almost looks like dragon's egg scales or like 
fish scales or I don't know, it just reminds me of a dragon skin somehow uh, when you follow the directions like that, which in my personal opinion matches much closer with the illustration than this. This is very flat and it's hard to see the scallop patterns come through versus this one. I feel like you're really seeing that scallop pattern coming through. So I am now working on the seventh row, which is the last row before I increase my hook size. So I'm just going to keep on crocheting across this one with my six millimeter hook. And then we're going to go up to 6.5 for the next bits. And the next bits are also, I decided to kind of do a half double crochet rather than a single crochet because I think that that turned out better in these samples. So I, I'm doing a double crochet for the scallops up here and then half double crochet for the rest of the scallops. And I'm doing a slip stitch in between rather than a single crochet because I think that that makes the definition of the scallops much clearer. And I'm really happy with how that's going so far. So let's keep on crocheting. Let's see, where are we now? Let me check. Ah, I just finished row 13. And I think that you can really start to see that texture coming out. I think that was a really good decision for me to like fully understand or like to go with the definition from the later beaten book. I think it's the later, my guess is it's the later beaten book rather than the earlier one that actually has the crochet definitions. And that really has made that texture of the scallops pop and I, I I personally think based on the illustration that that is what the pattern is going for. Now, half of this has been done with a double stitch and the other half has been done with a half double crochet, US terms, but the half double crochet has been done with a larger crochet hook size. So I think that you can somewhat tell that there's a difference about halfway through, but it blends a lot better than it did in the past. In total, there are, I think, about 20 rows at the longest point of this. And it does have you steam it. So currently it's kind of in like a tighter configuration versus after I steam block it a little bit, it should grow. Looking at the size now, I do think that the length looks a lot better. <laughs> I mean, obviously it looks a lot better than the first cape, which is, yeah, well, lovely little collar or cape for Nutella. Now we are at row 14 where we're going to have two changes. I'm going to go up to the next crochet hook size because we are changing the way that the scallops happen. The first time that I did this pattern, this is kind of where I split the scallop over two stitches and it really changed the texture of the stitch so that it didn't match up anymore. Like the bottom half of the cape pelerine really didn't match the top half. Like it did not look like a scallop anymore. When I was doing it in my test pieces, what I did is I would choose one of the two slip stitches in which to make this scallop. And I always did it consistently in that one. What I might do because a stitch definition is so pronounced now is on my next row, I'm going to do a test where I'll do a few where I choose just one and I'll do a few where I split them across the two. And I just want to get a feel for how that texture would look. Maybe I'll do like even a few back and forth each way. So like maybe two with just one and two where I split it across the two and just kind of work back and forth in, in short rows and crochet to get an idea of which one looks better and which one has that. Cause I think the idea is that it's supposed to look the same from the top to the bottom with the scallops growing proportionally, like slightly larger as the uh, pelerine gets longer. Also, I'm sorry, there's a thunderstorm outside. So I tried my best to like sound isolate myself, but it's it's storming out there. So I hope it's, it's not too loud in the background. But I'm really happy with how this is turning out overall. Like that's super cute. You know what I can't help but do is now that I know that this pattern book um, is about from 1870 and I have this 
color that I don't usually work in a lot. I'm just imagining like the rest of the ensemble. Like what would that look like to match with a pelerine like this? What would I wear a pelerine in this olive green over to make the ensemble come together? Would it be like chocolate brown with olive tones? Maybe like a deep red would go nicely with it. I always personally lean towards blue, but I feel like this would lean more into like the earthy fall tones, maybe like a golden yellow, that burnt orange, like that's what I'm really feeling from this pelerine. Let me know what you think, um, what kind of ensemble this would really complement. If I get a wearable piece out of this at the end, keep your fingers crossed. It is, the length is looking a lot better, but now I am honestly worried a little bit about the width. Okay, that was a lot of rambling, but in any case, I'm gonna move on to the next crochet hook up. Ideally, that would be a seven millimeter crochet hook, but I am going off of my mom's stash. She has so much stuff, but they're also in the process of like moving. So half, more than half things are packed away. So it's basically what can we access? So the next size up I have is a nine millimeter. So I'm gonna do my best to work with a nine millimeter and like crochet really tight at the beginning and kind of loosen up so it's not as drastic of a change between the two crochet hook sizes. I will check in with you when I have the sampling done. <laughs> We'll see what we like. So yesterday evening, like I mentioned, I added this little, you can see this little section where I was trying out exactly how to do the eight half double crochets across two stitches. Whether I was actually going to do them across two stitches like in this scallop, or I was going to pick one of them and do it in just in the one like this scallop. Now, when I'm looking at it a little bit further away, I don't know that you can honestly tell the difference except for that the eight in one has a larger hole in the center. But I will say, in order to make the eight that go truly across to look as even, I did have to sit there and like really pull at the bottom of this scallop here so that it didn't look like two bumps like Mickey Mouse ears but instead just like one. So rather than having to sit there like fiddle with the scallops that are done two and one, I'm thinking that I will just do them all in one, even though it leaves the larger hole in the center, it does give more of a true scallop shape. And looking at the overall fabric that I'm creating, I think that it works better as like a larger gradient going down. Here in this row is where I work them all in one versus where they're worked across two of the slip stitches here. And I do think that you are starting to see a little bit of that divot inside here. And that is going to show up more and more as I create more of these rows. So. I'm gonna unravel this bit that I did as a test, and I'm gonna go across with doing all eight half double crochets in one of the slip stitches, the one that's more centrally placed. Because I'm trying my cape on, I've clipped my microphone to my hair. I hope you can still hear me okay. But I have now finished row 19 of this cape and I threaded some string through the top just so I could try it on because this is going to be the maximum length in the front. But I have, I think, six more rows to increase the length in the back. And I'm really happy with it. So this isn't going to be quite the maximum length yet because I have to add the a uh, long scalloped border around the top, but I am glad that I'm going to be adding a little bit more length to the, it'll be like the side and back because it does feel a little short there. So let me show you exactly where I'm going to be adding that length because I haven't fully figured it out yet myself. So let's go look at the instructions and where that should be on this cape. 
Okay, I hope you can hear me all right. So I've laid out the cape on the ground straight after taking it off. I was worried that around the neckline it would be way too thick to gather up nicely, but as I was wearing it just now, it really wasn't a problem. And now I feel like it's also kind of perfectly taken on the circular shape that the cape needs. Now the next bit of instructions say that you need to be working on just the uh, middle 22 repeats of the pattern. I remember when I did this before, I was kind of confused what they meant by a repeat of a pattern because you have you know, you're working in between. So the next row, I'm not gonna be working on top of this scallop, for example. I'm gonna be working between these two scallops. So like, what did we mean these two together were one? Or just this one was one? Like, what do we mean by one repeat? But I just counted how many scallops there were on the bottom row, and I am at 26. And it says the next bit is to repeat it on just the next, the middle 22. So I'm going to consider that the 22 spaces in between, and I'll mark out those 22, and we're doing nine half double crochets. And then you go from 22 to 17, and then you know further and further in until you get down, I think you do six rows. So basically six short rows. So I'm gonna do that and I will, I'll show you the progress maybe after two of them. So you can kind of see what that's looking like. I'm so close to being done though. I was really worried I was gonna to have to redo this again, but I think it's looking really good so far. Okay, I think you can see it a little bit now. It seems a little wonky, honestly. I might have to redo some of my counting. Oh no, I think we're just folded under a little bit here. It's just not pulled straight, okay. All right, so we are a few rows later here with the short rows that we're adding just really on the back of this cape. I have three to go, but they're much smaller. Um, I think it's like six, two, and then one. So I'm, I'm actually nearly done with this cape, but I think you can really see the shaping here at the bottom edge where you have a little bit more length here. I'm liking how this looks. You do have a bit of a step change, like right there and right there that is a little obvious right now, but I think it'll become less obvious once I add the border. So I will finish the last three of these short rows that I'm calling it because that's what I know from knitting. And then I will check back in once I'm doing the border. And of course, as you can see, I have plenty of ends to weave in as well, but I'll see you again when it's time to do the all around scalloped border. Okay, all of the short rows are done now and I have made this little crochet chain to be the tie for this. I still have lots of ends to weave in, but I thought I would check in right now as I'm going to be adding the large scalps around made all out of treble US crochet stitches. And then we are fully finished. What do you think? Have I redeemed myself? I hope that I did. I think this looks much closer to the Pellerine picture that we saw that's part of this pattern, and I'm super happy that I gave this another shot. If you like what you watched, please feel free to subscribe, and here are a few other videos of mine that I think you might enjoy if you've enjoyed watching this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!